We're looking now at aerobic respiration. Now the first stage of both aerobic and anaerobic respiration is known as glycolysis. And this occurs in the cytosol. Now the cytosol is slightly different to the cytoplasm. The cytosol is your intracellular fluid that is present in the cells. Whereas the cytoplasm is the part of the cell which is contained within the entire cell membrane. So the cytosol is really that liquid fluid which is in the cytoplasm. So what happens in glycolysis? Well, first of all, we take our glucose molecule. And our glucose, as we know, is a six carbon compound and is the starting point for both anaerobic and aerobic respiration. Now, the first step is to phosphorylate that glucose. By that, we mean we add a phosphate group. And these phosphate groups come from ATP. And this creates a molecule called hexose bisphosphate. which again is a six carbon compound, but this time has two phosphate groups attached to it. The addition of these phosphate groups makes the molecule unstable, and so we undergo lysis, which means breaking down. And this creates two three carbon molecules, each known as triose phosphate. These molecules undergo another round of phosphorylation this time using inorganic phosphate, which is available in the cytosol, to create triose bisphosphate. Finally, these phosphate molecules are removed to help form ATP, leaving us with two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. Now, as each molecule of triose bisphosphate is losing two phosphate groups, we can actually create two molecules of ATP from both of these. In addition, we are also reducing two NAD plus coenzymes. So one from here, which becomes NADH, and one from here, which also becomes NADH. Now this process of creating ATP during glycolysis is known as substrate level phosphorylation. And as I said before, it occurs for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration because this is happening outside of the mitochondria in the cytosol. So if we look at our overall net gain from glycolysis, you can see that we're creating one, two, three, four ATP, but we're actually using up two ATP at the beginning. So our overall net gain is two ATP molecules plus one, two NADH molecules, which are important as we get to the next stages of aerobic respiration. The next stage of aerobic respiration is called the link reaction. And it is called this because it is linking the glycolysis process, which takes place in the cytosol, with the Krebs cycle, which takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. So what happens here? Well, first of all, our pyruvate, which remember we made two molecules of during glycolysis and is a three carbon compound, is transported by transport proteins through both membranes of the mitochondria into the matrix. Once it's reached the matrix, the pyruvate undergoes what is known as decarboxylation, which is the removal of a carbon group in the form of carbon dioxide, CO2. And this process also reduces NAD plus into NADH. And as we've lost a carbon, we now have a two carbon compound, which we call acetyl. Now this acetyl group is then combined with a coenzyme called coenzyme A. And this forms acetyl coenzyme A. Now this process of removing that carbon group from the pyruvate to convert it into acetyl is known as oxidative decarboxylation. Oxidative because an oxidation reaction means the removal of hydrogen, which is what reduces your NAD plus to NADH. And decarboxylation because you're removing your carboxy group or your carbon dioxide. 
So again, if we look at our overall net gain of the link reaction this time, you can see that we're creating one NADH and one carbon dioxide per pyruvate molecule. But remember, from our glycolysis reaction, each glucose molecule is broken down into two pyruvate molecules. And therefore, per glucose molecule, our link reaction is actually producing two NADH and two carbon dioxide molecules. So our link reaction has left us with two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A, which is a two carbon compound attached to a coenzyme. Now this is all taking place in the matrix of the mitochondria, and that's the same place where the Krebs cycle takes place, which is the next stage in aerobic respiration. So if we start again with our molecule of acetyl coenzyme A, and we'll be looking at just one, but remember this is happening twice per glucose molecule. So the first thing that happens in the Krebs cycle is that molecule of acetyl-CoA loses its coenzyme group and joins with an existing four carbon compound called oxaloacetate. And as it does so, it loses its coenzyme A group. Now that coenzyme A group can go back into the link reaction to join with another acetyl group. And the remaining carbon compounds join together to form a six carbon compound called citrate. Now this six carbon compound goes through a range of reactions and intermediates, generating more NADH, carbon dioxide, and ATP. So first of all, it undergoes another decarboxylation reaction, which means it loses a molecule of CO2 and NAD plus is reduced to NADH. As you've lost a carbon group, in the decarboxylation, you now have a five carbon compound. You don't need to know the name of this compound, you just need to remember how many carbons it has. This five carbon compound undergoes more decarboxylation, so it loses another CO2. And again, NAD plus is reduced to NADH. And unsurprisingly, this creates a four carbon compound. Now this four carbon compound, again at this stage, you don't need to know its name, undergoes another series of reactions, creating other four carbon compound intermediates until we reform our oxaloacetate. And these intermediate reactions generate another molecule of ATP. You may see this written as GTP in some of your exam boards. Don't worry, for A-level, they're essentially the same thing. And of course, you need some inorganic phosphate to add to your ADP to make it into ATP. It reduces another coenzyme called FAD+ to make FADH2 and another molecule of NAD plus is reduced to NADH. So that's the entire Krebs cycle. This is all taking place in the matrix of the mitochondria. And again, if we look at our net gain overall, you can see that we're making one molecule of ATP. We are making three molecules of NADH we're making one molecule of FADH2, and finally we're making two molecules of carbon dioxide. But remember, this Krebs cycle, again, is happening twice per one molecule of glucose, which means per molecule of glucose, the Krebs cycle is giving us two ATP molecules, six NADH molecules, two FADH2 molecules, and four carbon dioxide molecules. And this is important when we look at the next stage and the final stage of respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain and happens in the inner membrane and the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So what is actually happening here? Well, now we see the importance of generating all these NADH and FADH2 molecules in our previous steps. And the reason they're important is because as they move towards the intermembrane space from the matrix, they lose the hydrogen ions and also a high energy electron. Now those high energy electrons are transferred to our proteins in an electron transport chain. And those electrons can give those proteins the energy they require to pump the hydrogen ions or protons from the matrix across the inner membrane into the intermembrane space. And this happens with both our NADH molecules and our FADH2 molecules. 
and those electrons, as they lose their energy, are passed on from protein to protein, donating more and more energy and allowing hydrogen ions to be pumped all the way along the electron transport chain from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Now the outcome of this is that we generate a proton gradient in the intermembrane space. And those protons, they want to flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. And they're able to do this through a special enzyme which we call ATP synthase. Now ATP synthase is also in the inner membrane and its role is to use the energy provided by the flow of protons through it to generate ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. And it's this process which is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Now the movement of those hydrogen ions from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across the membrane through ATP synthase is known as chemiosmosis. And this oxidative phosphorylation is a much more efficient way of producing ATP than the previously seen methods of substrate level phosphorylation, which means per molecule of glucose, we're actually generating 32 molecules of ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. Now the final stage of aerobic respiration is what happens to those electrons and those hydrogen ions after they've lost their energy and after the hydrogen ions have flown back through the ATP synthase back into the matrix. And that is where oxygen comes in. So oxygen is our final electron acceptor. And that means that oxygen accepts the electron once it's lost a lot of its energy it combines with the hydrogen ions and it produces water. Because remember, our overall equation for aerobic respiration is glucose, which we used at the very beginning in glycolysis to break down into pyruvate, plus oxygen, which we've just said we use at the very end as a final electron acceptor, it creates carbon dioxide, which we've seen is produced throughout the aerobic respiration process as you decarboxylate those carbon compounds to remove a carbon. And finally, water, which again, we've just seen from using the oxygen to accept that electron and the hydrogen ions to create the water. Right, I hope you found that useful. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'm sure Hazel will be back soon to do some more videos herself.